Mr. Dyson here with video 2.6 vector component examples. Just want to go through four examples with you to help reinforce some of the concepts we've been talking about with vector components. So example one, let's find the components of the vector whose magnitude is 70 and is directed 23 degrees south of east. So now we're beginning to draw these pictures. We don't have to use a protractor or a ruler to measure anything. So we want to just start off with creating the vector. And uh, it says its magnitude is 70. Again, I'm just going to make it a certain length. And I'm going to write the number 70 on it. And 23 degrees south of east. So this is east. As we're heading south of east, come down to, you know, I'm just estimating 23 degrees because I'm going to write that in too. And there's, there's my... Uh, component. There's my 70 for the magnitude. And up here I'll write in my 23 degrees. I want to emphasize, make a graph picture. We need to know where the vector's pointing. So we can't just create a triangle floating out in space. We have to have an x and a y axis. We have to know where we are on that x and y axis. So we're 23 degrees south of east. Magnitude of the vector is 70. We want to find its components. Okay, so first of all, let's draw the components in there. The x component, starting at the center here, working your way out, you get the x component. And then at the tip of the arrow of the x component, we're going to go down, and there's our y component. Our job here is to figure out how long these are. We know that the hypotenuse here is 70. We want to figure out how long each of the components is. So for the x component, the formula we use, you take the hypotenuse, 70, you multiply by the cosine of the angle, 23 degrees. Remember, we must have the angle that's between the vector and the x-axis, the bow tie angle. 70 cosine of 23 is 64.4. So 64.4 is the magnitude for this component, the x component. The y component, we're going to use 70 times the sine of 23. So that gives us 27.4. Remembering that uh, when you head downward, you're heading in a negative direction. So we, we slap the negative onto it. We're not going to get the negative out of this calculation over here. That's going to give us positives. We have to know uh, positives and negatives by looking at the picture. Again, a reason why the picture is important. So this component is negative 27.4. And um, uh, I guess that's it. Let's move on to example two. In example two, we want to find the components of a vector that has a magnitude 45 directed 230 degrees from the x-axis. Now, this is a different way of describing direction. It's not using north, south, east, or west. This idea is that you start, you create your vector, you start over here at the x-axis, and you go 230 degrees from the x-axis. We move counterclockwise. Always move and measure angles counterclockwise. So I'm moving, and this is 90 degrees. 180 degrees, okay, so 190, 200, 210, 220, 230. Okay, again, it doesn't have to be exact. You're going to write the amount in here. I'm going to write 230 in for the angle. Uh, actually, I'm not going to write 230, but I'm going to write the magnitude in, which is 45. We never want to put an angle in that's more than 90 degrees because, again, we want the bow tie angle. So you, you just have to think a little bit here. How far did I go past 180? Because the angle I want is between the vector here and the x-axis. That's the angle I want. And on my way through here, when I went around 90, 180, how far past 180 did I go to get to 230? Well, you can just do a quick calculation if you want. 230 take away 180 is 50. So I went from here down to here, I went 50 degrees. So the angle is 50 degrees in here. And that's what we're going to use for our calculations. Okay, so now that I have that, I know that the x component is equal to the magnitude of the vector multiplied by the cosine of 50. x goes with cosine, y goes with sine. So the y component is the, ma is the magnitude 45 times the sine of 50. All right, we get our answers there, and we create our components. Again, remembering, because I have the picture now, I can see the y component answer has to be negative, and so does the x component's answer. Okay, so they're both going in negative directions. All right, so that's figuring out the components based on the magnitude given and the direction. How about the opposite? 
find the magnitude and the direction of a vector whose components are given x component is negative 4 meters, y component is 8 meters. Again, we start with a graph. We start at the center of the graph. We're going to make the x component first. So the x component is here. And they tell us that that is 4 meters or negative 4 meters, which is what told me to go to the left, start at the center and go to the left by 4. And then the y component is 8, so that's positive. So that's heading up. All right, so we're going to draw our y component at the tip of the arrow here for the x component and then heading upward, and that's positive 8. Those are our components. Now we want to find the magnitude of our uh, resultant vector. Here's the resultant vector, and we want to find its magnitude. So that's a simple Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Solving down and through this, of course, at the end you're going to get there and you have to do square roots on both sides but you get the answer 8.9 meters. So 8.9 goes over here. That's the magnitude of the resultant vector. What about the angle? Okay, so finding the direction for the vector. First, we want the angle, and for that, we have to do inverse tangent. Again, it's the y over the x. You want the y component's number over the x component's number, 8 over 4. Do not put negative numbers inside this tangent calculation. So you get your answer 63 degrees. So it's a 63 degree angle here. And the direction we can see from the graph is north of west. So 63 degrees north of west. So just to say this for the record, while I want you to understand how to do this, this 230 degrees from the x-axis stuff, I want you to recognize that when you run into it in problems, I do not plan to put that on tests. I will use this method on tests, the method that we just did here with the uh, north, south, east, and west. Last example, find the magnitude and the direction of a vector whose components are 3 meters per second and negative 7 meters per second. First, we'll draw in the components. So the first one is the, I'm sorry, I didn't say x and y. I didn't write that in the problem. The x component is the 3. The y component is the negative 7. So 3 is the x component, positive. And then starting at the tip of the arrow for the x component, we want to go down 7, so negative 7. Okay, we have these labeled. And we want to find the resultant magnitude and direction. So here's the resultant, starting from the center again, going out to the tip of the second uh, component. And we want to find its magnitude. So that's an a squared plus b squared equals c squared problem. Okay, and square root both sides for your answer. So the magnitude is 7.6 in here somewhere, I guess not, 7.6. And now for the direction. So we want to find the angle that's between the vector and the x-axis, and we can see the direction is going to be south of east. So angle, we want the second tangent of the 7 over the 3. Again, leave the negative out of the calculation, 7 over 3. And this gives us 67 degrees for our angle, and so it's 67 degrees south of east. Okay, four good problems to have in your notebook. Don't you just feel great about that?